Hello. Okay, we're gonna get started with our science lesson right now. And we're gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna show you some information that you can use. So first, let's look at this because you're gonna have an assignment in your portfolio. Um, Ms. Lafitte is going to post that, that you can do. Okay, so right now we are looking at this box. Let me lock this meeting to make sure nobody could get in. Okay, so we are looking at this box right here. This box, this one that I'm putting a box around. And this is what your assignment is going to be for today. And this is something that we have already done. This is something that we have already done. So students should be able to, to work on it. And this is from the technology video. And so if you open this up, school then and now, it will take you to Pebble. Oh, and I believe I sent this. Let me erase that box. I have sent this video, I sent these to you, but I have them in here so that we can go through it together. Okay, so this takes you to pebble.go and I'm just gonna go ahead and go into pebble.go through here so that you could see what it is we're doing we're looking at school then and now um and you also have access to mac and via through clever and we're going to pebble go and it's social studies so we're going to open that up And we are doing school then and now. And so if we look here, then pebble.go gives you this information. Okay, and you can listen to it. In the early 1600s, most children in the colonies did not go to school. They learned at home by the 1700 school houses were built. Students learned to read and write. They wrote on a slate or birch park sheet. And then they have a picture there. And the children can listen to this. And like I said, I will show you how to get here at the end of the video. School on the frontier. On the frontier, children often walked along long distances to go to school. Students studied together in one-room schools. They had few books and wrote on slates with chalk. Most African Americans did not go to school. School in the early 1900s. In the 1900s, most city kids went to large schools. In rural areas, some kids still had one-room schools. African Americans went to school in a separate building. All students studied reading, writing, and math. School in the 1950s. In the 1950s, many white and African American kids went to the same schools. Most kids rode a bus or walked to school. Schools were large, larger and had more books and supplies. School today. Schools today are busy. Students still learn reading, writing, and math, but they also work on computers. Students choose books from their school's library. They learn about music, arts, and different languages. And then here they have more articles that you can look at. So let's go back and look at what else it says. Explore play the past the present sort and so there is a game in here i believe this is a past and present and like i said my kids and i have already done these things so they know exactly what to do so here you would print out if you like and you don't have to and let them tell you what things belong in the past and what things belong in the present, what belongs in the past, 
what belongs in the present. And these are things, and there's one in here, there's a colored one and there's one in black and white that they can use to do this. And I'm going through it really, really fast. Cause like I said, it's a review. So this is the box that they're working in. And then explain your learning, draw a picture of yourself in kindergarten and then draw a picture as a sixth grader. What would you look like as a sixth grader? List the ways that you are different and that you will be different in sixth grade than you are now in kindergarten, okay? So with this, they are researching schools then and now, families and children, how are they alike and how are they different now than they were a long time ago. And then they're gonna explain their learning. They're gonna draw a picture of themselves now in kindergarten and then draw yourself as a sixth grader. List the ways that you are different in sixth grade than in kindergarten. So this is the box that they're working in, science, social studies, okay? This is the one that they are going to do for today, okay? Now, for those of you that cannot access the technology, for those of you that are not able to access that now, there is another science or social studies that you can do, and it's kind of the same. It says draw a picture of you working with your teacher, and you can still do the same lesson, but this is also here for you, okay? You could do it also. Draw a picture of you working with your teacher. Write down a few things that your teacher has taught you this year. Write one thing that you miss about seeing your teacher each day at school. And so that was, this is the first box in this one. And these things have been emailed to you, but this right here, so I wanna make sure you know what's gonna be in your portfolio, what's gonna be assigned, okay? Right here, explain your learning. Draw a picture of yourself now in kindergarten and then draw yourself as a sixth grader. List the ways that you are different in sixth grade than in kindergarten. So how will you be different in sixth grade than you are right now in kindergarten? What are some things that would be different? So when you draw your picture, Think, think about that. What are some things that are going to be different? Okay. How are you going to be different? Are you going to be the same size? Are you going to look the same? What, what's going to be, what's going to be different? Okay. All righty. So that is social studies for today. Now we are going to move into our science lesson. And so I'm going to close out some of these screens. This is gonna be our read aloud for today. I'm gonna to post that for you. Um, but we're gonna go here and we're gonna talk about classifying animals today. We're gonna to talk about classifying animals. And remember we started chapter two a long time ago and I'm gonna show you what this is. And there is a pickup on Wednesday. So if you did not get your open court book and your science book yet, I just talked to Ms. Lafitte. They have not been mailed out yet. You can come on Wednesday from 1 to 2.45. And I'm saying 2.45 because at 3 o'clock we need to be packed up and ready to leave the school. Um, and it's going to be a drive through I believe, just like it was before. Um, there's a place for you to drop off work that is already completed. So if you have not put those in your portfolio, you can bring them and drop them off into at the school. And then there will be a pickup. And so then you can get your open court book, your science book, and your social studies book at that time. Okay. And I am going to try and be there. I really, I'm not supposed to be outside too much, but I will try and be there around that time so that I could see some of you as you come by. Um, they're not letting a lot of us Come in the come in the school, but I will attempt to be there, um, depending on protocols. Okay, because we have to follow protocols. But remember, we started this chapter: plants and animals. What are these? What are you, what, are you, what are these? Hmm? I think they're alligators. That's what I think. 
because you know alligators and crocodiles, one has a longer snout. And I think an alligator's snout is longer than a crocodile's. A crocodile's is more rounded than an alligator's. So that's something we can investigate. So our performance ind indicators, we're gonna describe living things, explain what animals need, because we already did plants, describe animal bodies, describe and explain what animals need, and explain why animals live, why living things live in certain places. So we are going to compare and contrast. And so one of our questions are gonna be, what are plants and animals like? So that's one of our questions. So for our first lesson, so this is something that we are gonna figure out. What are plants and animals like? Okay, so there's that. We already did that. We already did that. Okay, so we're going to do lesson one today. Okay, this is lesson one. How can you sort animals? And another word for sort that I want you to know is classify. How can we classify animals. Say the word classify. How can we classify animals? And the word classify means to sort. Animals are different colors and sizes. Animals have different body coverings. Animals have different ways of moving. Look at the animals in the picture. Which animals are alike in one way? So let's look at these animals. Let's see what do we have on here. What is that? A snake? Ooh, I don't like snakes. Frog, fish, giraffe, bird. What is one way that all of these animals are alike? What's one way all of these animals are alike? What do you think? Tell me how you think they are alike. Hmm. And so then when you get your science book, or if you already have it, because some people already have theirs, this is the page you are going to do. You see the number in the bottom? It says activity 14. How can you sort animals? Circle the animals that are the same color. Circle the animals that are small. Circle the animals that have fur. Okay, and then you can post that to your portfolio. That's lesson one. Okay, that's lesson one. And we are going to look at a brain pop video on classifying animals. Right, Ms. Burns already has set up for you. had it on a long time. So I gotta go back in and do it again. Is that out? Let's see. Yeah. Aren't you excited for our trip to the zoo? I can't wait to see all my favorite animals. How do we classify animals? When you classify, you sort things into groups to show how they are alike. Because there are many kinds of animals, it can help to classify them in different ways. All animals are divided into two main groups, vertebrates and invertebrates. A vertebrate is an animal that has a spine or backbone. People are vertebrates. You can feel your spine going all the way up your back and through your neck. Lions, fish, birds, snakes, and even turtles are all vertebrates. An invertebrate is an animal that does not have a spine. Insects like butterflies and grasshoppers are invertebrates.
So are spiders, worms, mussels, starfish, and squid. Most of the world's animals are invertebrates. Scientists classify vertebrates and invertebrates into even more groups. Hmm, what are mammals? Mammals are vertebrates that get milk from their mothers when they are very young. They breathe air with lungs and have hair or fur. Right, Moby? People are mammals. Some mammals live in water, like whales. But they still have lungs to breathe oxygen, so they need to come up for air. They even have hair. The smallest mammal in the world is the bumblebee bat. It's about the size of a thumb. Bats are the only mammals that fly like birds. But what are birds? Birds are vertebrates, and they're the only animals that have feathers. Birds have a beak, two wings, and two legs. They also lay eggs, and most care for their young. No, Moby, not all birds fly. Penguins are flightless birds. They dive and swim to hunt for fish. Hmm, what are fish? Most fish are vertebrates that live in water. Fish have gills to help them breathe and take in oxygen out of the water. Many have scales, which help them move through the water. Sharks and stingrays are also fish. They have gills, but they don't have scales. Their bodies are made out of cartilage. It's the same stuff that's in our nose and ears. Some animals spend time in water and on land. What are amphibians? Amphibians are animals that have adapted to live on water and land. Right, frogs are amphibians. They hatch from tiny, soft eggs in the water. When they're tadpoles, they breathe through gills and live underwater. As they get older, most frogs grow lungs to help them breathe on land. Many amphibians can breathe underwater through their skin, which takes oxygen out of the water. Toads, salamanders, newts, and Sicilians are all types of amphibians. Amphibians are cold-blooded. Not exactly, Moby. Cold-blooded animals use the environment to help control their own body temperatures. They can use heat from the sun to warm up, or they might use water or shade to cool down. Insects, most fish, and most reptiles are cold-blooded animals. What are reptiles? Reptiles are vertebrates. They breathe using lungs, and their bodies are covered by scales. Most reptiles lay eggs, kind of like birds. Snakes, lizards, crocodiles, and tortoises are all reptiles. Even though sea turtles live in the ocean, they're reptiles too. They've adapted to live in their ocean environment. Hmm, I'm confused. What kind of animal are you? You're definitely not a reptile, Moby. Moby is so silly. Okay, so that's our lesson for today on animals. Tomorrow, so you're going to be looking at how to classify animals, and this is our page. We're going to sort or classify our animals by color, by size, and by body covering. 
that's how we are going to classify them. And parents, if you're looking for the directions, the directions are on the bottom of the page down there on that tiny print. And so tomorrow we're going to do lesson two. What are some parts of animals? What are some parts of animals? We're gonna do lesson two. And then as we go through, then we will skip and do lesson five. What are some plants and, and animals that live on land? Or we talk about the animals that live on land. Then we're gonna do lesson six, animals that live in the water. We're gonna look at our stem, the basic needs of animals. And then we will complete our, we will complete our assessments, okay? And by the time we get ready to do our assessment, you should, everybody should have their book and then you will not need to copy anything. I hope you all have a great day. We will be working from our choice board daily this week so that we could all stay on task and I'll see you later.